right? In Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of Elohim moved upon the face of the waters. And Elohim said, Let there be light. And there was light. And Elohim saw the light, that it was good. And Elohim divided the light from the darkness. And Elohim called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. The first five verses of the Bible inform us that Yahweh brought creation out of chaos. And chaos is a word that we as Americans understand in a way that we never have understood it before. In the past few years, we have discovered what real chaos is. We go back, remember the bombing of the federal building in Oklahoma City and the chaos that followed. We know what the present darkness can do to teenagers as we've witnessed the images of school shootings in Paducah and Columbine. And September 11, 2001 is a date that, to use the words of Franklin Roosevelt, will live in infamy. The pictures of airplanes deliberately crashing into the World Trade Center and the Pentagon will, will be etched upon our psyche forever. And when someone speaks of anthrax or smallpox or E. coli or COVID-19 or nuclear warheads, immediately the pictures is of a chaos that bioterrorism and war bring. But Yahweh is an Elohim who brings meaning and order out of chaos. The essence of creation confirms this. In the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was, in other words, it became formless and empty, and darkness was over the surface of the deep. The earth was without form. It was unshaped. It was undeveloped. It was unfinished. These are tough words, words of chaos and hopelessness. But maybe that's the point. All of us at some time or another have found something about our lives that can be described with words like formless and empty and dark. And as we go into the world, we come face to face with other people who feel as if these are the words that describe their lives as well. They feel as if there is no hope that everything is formless and empty, that darkness covers everything. Have you ever felt as if, some, as if everything was out of order in your life? Like nothing was fitting together perfectly as it should? Many, many of us say things like, nothing ever works out, outright, and my personal life is a mess or my career is in shambles. This is not how I planned life to be. There's only one way to have our lives move from the chaotic to the state where there is real peace and real order. We need Yahweh's creative power. We must put our lives in his hands and let he, him direct us. Yahweh has a plan for all of us, a perfect plan. And yet so many of us are chasing our tails. Our family lives may be dysfunctional. Our finances may be a mess. We may have relationship problems or lives may be constantly in upheaval. Why? Because too many of us are trying to live life according to our own wisdom to achieve our own desires. In Proverbs 14 verse 12 says, There is a way which seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And when we're calling the shots, Yahweh isn't. When we are calling the shots, we are devoid of Yahweh's creative power. But the good news is that there is no chaos 
that is too great for Yahweh to be able to turn it into order. The Bible tells us that Abraham believed this. Yahweh gives life to the dead and calls things that are not as though they were. And because Abraham believed this, he became the father of many nations. Nothing is impossible with Yahweh. Many people complain about the meaningless of life. Some people get into the point where they are ready to give up on life, not necessarily because of the hardships they are facing, but because of their boredom, their monotony, the lack of purpose. And this is what King Solomon felt whenever he looked at life on earth without reference to Yahweh. In the book of Ecclesiastes, he cries, meaningless, meaningless. Everything is meaningless. In other words, it's all in vain. Life is just a passing of time. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 1. <clears throat> the words of the preacher, <clears throat> the son of David, king, of Jerusalem, king in Jerusalem, Vanities of vanities, says the preacher, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. What profit has a man of all his labor which he takes under the sun? One generation passes away and another generation comes, but the earth abides forever. The sun also arises and the sun goes down and hastens to his place where he arose. The wind goes towards the south and turns about into, unto the north. It whirls about continually, and the wind returns again according to his circuits. All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. Unto the place from whence the rivers come, there they return again. All things are full of labor, man cannot utter it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. The things that has been... It is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. Is there anything whereof it may be said, see, this is new? It has been already of old time, <coughs> which was before us. And without Yahweh, this is true. We exist, but nothing more. Only Yahweh can turn empty years into four seasons. I used to live in Wisconsin where you can enjoy four seasons. A few months ago it was autumn and also those beautiful colors as leaves started falling from the trees. Now winter has come. This gets folks ready for spring. When the warmth starts to return and everything seems to brighten and finally we have summer. Hot days, balmy nights, crickets, and barbecues. Aren't the seasons wonderful? Each of them have their own peculiar beauty. I love the seasons, and Yahweh created them. He hung the stellar bodies in place. He marked out the seasons. Only Yahweh can make the days and weeks flow together in rhythm. Only Yahweh can put meaning and purpose into life. As believers, we still experience difficult seasons, trials and hardships. There's winter as well as spring, but Yahweh causes even those times to have purpose. We soon learn that in Romans 8:28, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love Yahweh, to them who are the called according to his purpose. As we look back, on tough times and see what Yahweh has done in our lives through them. Well, it's amazing. But we're still glad that we went through them. Yes, the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the deep. But you know what? The spirit of Elohim was hovering over the waters. What an incredible gift. To know that when we need Yahweh the most, Yahweh is right there, waiting for us to turn to him, waiting to create life in an otherwise empty world. When we get to the point in our lives when it seems as if everything we look, there is nothing but darkness, right there on the edge, 
we will find Yahweh. Yahweh is always there, waiting and watching, wanting to create something extraordinary in our lives. And you know what? If we are willing to let him, that is exactly what he does. The Bible tells us that anyone who comes to Messiah, Yeshua, is a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. 2 Corinthians 15 verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Messiah, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Galatians 6.15 For in Messiah Yeshua neither circumcision avails anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. On the first day, Yahweh gave the earth light. And that's the first thing Yahweh does when he begins working in our lives. He fills us with his divine light. Yeshua said, I am the light of the world. John 8 verse 12. Then spoke Yeshua again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And John chapter 1 tells us that in him was life, and that the life was the light of men. John 1 verse 4. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. So when we turn to Yahweh, we find the light of Yeshua Messiah. We discover a hope and a promise and a future. We discover, much to our amazement, that Yahweh has been there all along. And now, as we trust him, he is going to do great things in our lives. Some of us have loved ones who've heard the gospel countless times, but they still don't believe. The fact is, we can put the truth right out under their noses, but they can't see it because of the darkness. What they need is an infusion of Yahweh's light so that they can see the truth. Let's continue to witness to them through our lives, and let's cry out to Yahweh until he shines his light into their lives, and they see and accept the truth of Yahweh for themselves. The ninth plague that Moses brought upon the land of Egypt, because Pharaoh wouldn't let Yahweh's people go, was the plague of darkness. Exodus chapter 10 tells us that the darkness was so thick that it could be felt. It was so intense that no Egyptian moved from their bed for three days. But while the Egyptians were in darkness, just down the road, the Israelite slaves had light in their dwellings. There may be darkness all around, but wherever Yahweh commands the light to shine, it shines. There are still dark moments in my life. There are many times that I am confused and I can't see which road to take. But when I seek Yahweh, his light comes flooding through. When we read the Bible, we think on Yahweh's word and ask for guidance through prayer. Yahweh turns darkness into light. And he does this. He begins to point out the things in our lives that threaten to destroy us. As the light of Yahweh begins to shine in our lives, it reveals our sin, the sin that Yeshua Messiah died for. Yeshua said, I have come that they may have life and to have it in the full. John 10 verse 10. The thief comes not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Life is not measured by the accumulation of things. It's not measured in days or years. Full life, abundant life, is measured by our character, by our love. It is measured by our relationship with Yahweh. When Yahweh created humankind, Adam and Eve, he created them to have fellowship with him. And when Yahweh gives us new life, it is again to have that intimate fellowship with Yahweh and Yeshua. 
If we want to know what it really means to have life, not empty life, not formless life, not life that is fulfilled with darkness, but real life, life that is filled with real peace, real joy, real love, we must come to Yeshua Messiah. Only the Elohim who created the world can create real life in us. Yahweh wants to have an intimate relationship with, us, with him. That's the reason Yeshua died at the stake. So that we could receive eternal life through him and be adopted into Yahweh's family. And Yahweh desires that intimate relation with every one of us. We have been created in Elohim's image so that we can have fellowship with Yahweh and have meaningful lives. Yahweh wants us to be fruitful. Yeshua said in John 15 verse 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. Isn't that what is wrong with much of the world today? So many lives are formless, empty, and dark. Chaos abounds. But in Yeshua Messiah, we have form. We have purpose. We have meaning. We have light. We have redemption. Formlessness, emptiness, darkness, Yes, there is a lot of that around us. But when the Elohim of creation looks at us, he sees what we can become. Unlike the nursery story of Humpty Dumpty who could not be put together again, we could be formed and filled anew. Yahweh could take all of the broken pieces all of the broken dreams, all of the broken up lives, and we create them into something. Something beautiful. Something good. All my conf confusion, Yeshua understood. All I had to offer him was brokenness and strife. But he made something beautiful of my life. And he will do the same for you. Yeah, we bless.